Hello everyone, I'm Bardia Akhbari, a PhD candidate at Brown University. So today I'm going to talk about uh, Autoscoper, an image registration software, and I'm going to show you how we use Autoscoper version 2.7 to track the bone inside video radiographs. On the left you see the wrist data that is tracked, and on the right you see the knee bones that they are tracked. So just another overview. Uh, Autoscoper uh, gets input gets three types of input. One of them is the bone or the implant image volume. This is a partial CT image, and the other input is the calibration files. These are the files that we need to. It, it, it kind of they're defining the 3D world view for the Autoscoper. They are basically the camera model or the X-ray source models. Uh, we also need the video radiographs because we are doing the tracking over them. Uh, they are undistorted video radiographs, and I'm going to show you uh, in a little bit of what do we mean by them. And Autoscoper, in Autoscoper we do the tracking, which I'm going to talk about today, and the, imp the output is the bone implant position and orientation in the space. One of the inputs, as I said, is the partial image volume or partial CT volume. Here you see the model of radius. We need to know the density-based information of the radius. You see the edges of the radius because the bone density is higher. They have higher intensity and the inside has less value. Uh, Autoscoper uses the ray casting approach to create the shadow or the digital reconstructed radiograph of the bones. So we need the density information. Mm, we also need the calibration uh, files. The calibration files define the space uh, for our X-ray system. So basically we want to know where are the X-ray sources, where are the X-ray uh, image intensifiers, and using basically like your eyes, we get two image and we reconstruct the 3D world. But we need to have a coordinate system uh, for to define everything relative to that part. Another input is the undistorted video radiographs. And one of the problems with radiography is the distortion. On the left, you see the acquired radiograph. You see on the edges, the this is a grid on the X-ray image intensifier, and everything here should be a circle. But on the edges, you see there is a distortion, and um, which is a problem with all of the pinhole cameras. And we have a method um, that we can undistort these radiographs, so you can see the edges look like the way that they should look like. We use an XMA lab software, which I'm going to talk about in another video. So the undistorted video, video radiographs are, for example, like this. This is wrist data. We have two views, view, the first view and the second view. And this is another input that we have. So basically, Autoscoper reads a text file. It's a config file. You can name it whatever you want. And the first input is your partial image volumes the path for your for your data. For example, if you are re reading, um, you want to read the tibia bone and track the tibia, you give it the path for tibia. You also need the, to know the voxel size or the CT image parameters in CT image acquisition values in X, Y, and Z. And you also need the calibration files, as I said. And this is the path to my calibration files. We have two cameras, so camera one and camera two for that acquisition, and you also need the undistorted video radiographs. So you give the path for those undistorted vid video radiographs to, your, to the autoscope. So you have a big config file, it's not that big actually, that reads your undistorted video radiographs, your calibration, and partial image volume. So let's look at the autoscoper main window. So if you open autoscoper, you see something like this. Here, in this view, you're going to see the video radiographs, here you're going to see a number of cameras and the image filters, and here you're going to see your image volumes. And these are the tools that you have you have that you can play with it. So if I load the knee data, for example, uh, you're going to see camera 1, camera 2, your bone models, tibia and femur in both views, and this is a pivot point that you can modify and adjust the location, which we're going to go talk about them in detail. And here you're going to see the results. There are six lines for six degrees of freedom, three orientation, and three uh, translations or positional values. Your volumes and the cameras that you have. You have camera one, camera two. Here I've preloaded some filters, the Sobel, fi Sobel filter, 
which detects the edges, the contrast to make the radiograph and the error look alike, and uh, some uh, parameters for your ray casting and the filter for that. So after you load everything, you can start diving in and playing with Autoscoper, which I'm going to show you that now. Let's see. Okay. So here uh, you see me using the Braun um, HPC system, the high performance computing, and I want to load some data for you. So let's first run Autoscoper here. So before I dive in, after I load Autoscoper, you see you can get the your graphics card and the driver that you have for your graphic card. Usually for Autoscoper to run perfectly, you need a NVIDIA graphic card because our code is CUDA based and you need to have your drivers, graphic card driver to be updated. Also the version of the software here that I'm showing you is version 2.7.2. .2. Okay. Everything is working. Okay, so I'm going to create a new uh, config file actually for you. So I want to look at the risk data. So we have two cameras for this sample database, and we want to look at two of the bone models. Let's do that. So the first cali so for every camera we need to load, we need to give the path for calibration file and video path, video radiograph file to Autoscoper. So your calibration file for need data, uh, for uh, risk data, risk camera one, dot text, and the same thing for camera two. If you have an organized uh, file structure, you can automate the whole process, which makes your life much easier. And the radiographs, let's load them undistorted ones, camera one, and undistorted camera two, camera two. So let's look at the let's load the image volumes. Also, if you have an organized file structure, that's much easy, much easier, and it can be automated. Let's load the radius first, and you need to know the values of your uh, CT acquisition. For us, it's 0.4 by 0.4 by 0.6, 25 millimeter, and it's the similar value for our other model. Let's track the third metacarpal here. And we had the same acquisition for the same subject. And if I press OK, it's going to load my risk data. You see everything is loaded here. Let's, before we do anything else, save the config file. I usually call them based on their. Uh, the bone of interest or the subject or the task name. Here, let's call it wrist sample config file. So if I open this config file, you're gonna see we have the calibration path, the radiographs path, and we have three lines for every bone model, radius and third metacarpal. This is a render resolution and optimization offset, which we're going to talk about in later videos. Okay, so let's dive in and do some tracking. So first of all, we need to add some filters. We have some preloaded filters for risk database, which you can find it. You can adjust these filters based on the joint that you're doing, working on, or read some of the references that we have to find the best filters or how, what's the best method to do the filtering of the image and the radio uh, DRRs, digital reconstructed radiographs. So let's do the tracking. So here you see the two views. Using control, I can zoom in to see what's going on. OK, too much. So let's start with radius. The radius is select, was selected, so I'm gonna move this. Put it somewhere. We need so the first step in Autoscoper for your tracking is for the first frame. You have to initialize the position manually. You can jump in between translation and rotation in your model pivot by W or E, or 
yeah if you use the shortcuts it makes your life much easier you need to have a little bit understanding of how the bones bones look like in the space based on the radiograph it gets better after a while that you look at so many of these radiographs on this blue screen but yeah it's hopefully we can find a way to automate this process to make the processing life faster processing much faster so I'm doing some rotation and translation to get the radius where it should be okay you're almost there you usually as I said the first time it's challenging and uh, this is a first frame out of too many so for the sample database I think I have two frames but it's usually less than that okay so you see because we are doing it in three dimensional every time that I change it in one camera it change in the other one okay so you see right now the initialization it's okay it's close to the place that we think radius is and but it's not good and if I show you the output of the software so if I press S it creates a keyframe and I can see what is the cost function for this uh, position so what we do is basically uh, the default is normalized cross correlation between the DRR and the radiographs and the value that this initial positioning that I have has is 1.7 1.7 is pretty bad because so as it gets closer to zero it's a bit better uh, cost function so if I press track current or C I can use the default values to do the optimization you see the value jump the optimization using HPC is, HPC is pretty fast and for e each epoch after it change you see the value for normal correlation it reduces so fast and it just takes less than three seconds and at the end it tells me how far my initial positioning was the first three values are the translations and the first the last three are rotations so my initial position was pretty bad but the software got got it and it fixed it and right now the <clears throat> cost uh, the cost function is about 0.6 which is pretty good actually for the quality of the videos there actually that's yeah so just to make sure I just translate it a little bit I press s I want to check how did I change the cost function you see the cost function jumped which showed this is a bad optimization so I run the tracking again to see if I get back to the same position which gets back to the same position it changes a little bit and the normal scores correlation was 0.6 so I call this a good optimization and you see here the views looks really good too you see if I can press H to hidden the DRR and you see it looks like the edges are on the edges and when we did the accuracy the accuracy is pretty good it's less than millimeter and less than degree of our gold standard so now let's go to the next frame if I go to the next frame, I can press next. So here our data acquisition was continuous, but for the sample data, I'm just uh, showing the jumps or I want to show you a whole system of movement. Um, that's the reason you see this big jump, but usually they're close to each other. And if I go to tracking dialog, I can read the first frame to, I can read the previous frame to initial, use, it, use it as initial guess and run it for the tracking for the second frame which works really good for our need uh, for the risk data set now that I open this let's look at it so let's look at the tracking options you can use the initial guess, guess based on the temporal data you can use the previous two frames to do the tracking or you can use just the previous frame you can change your optimization method and you can change your optimization parameters so let me just track another uh, frame for you I want to see if I can get a good answer based on a bad initial position you see the radius on the left rotated a little bit but I don't want to do the initial position or guess it I want to see if I can do a good job with a really bad initial position so my current cost function is 1.79 which is pretty bad I run the tracking see if we can work 
something that it's going actually that was really good uh, usually for the knee data if, for the wrist data if you have a good quality it's gonna fix it for you and you see in 2.5 seconds that poor initial position uh, got me a really good answer 0.59 cost function which is probably correct usually if I want to really be detailed I move this a little bit and run the optimization again to see if I get the same answer which when you get a close answer it means your tracking is good and that's how we calculate the accuracy calculate the accuracy so this should work very well okay so one last thing how to save your data when you press on save tracking you give it the path for your data for example wrist sample radius the data is saved as .tra if I press save, it wants me to give it what are the options. For example, if you want your data to look something um, the way that you're currently processing your data, you can manipulate that. So I usually get the data in matrix format, and I want everything to be written in one line as row, and I want them to be comma separated. I'm going to explain all of this in detail later on. If I press OK, it's going to save the data for us.